Hello, I'm Michael Novak and welcome to Philharmonic First Fridays at Four, a series of musical programs that features members of the Santa Maria Philharmonic in unique and intimate settings throughout the county. Today we are here at the Moxie Cafe in Santa Maria, which is located right across the street from Hardy Diagnostics. Founded by Jay Hardy in 1980, Hardy Diagnostics is a biomedical manufacturing company that is 100% owned by its employees. During the pandemic, Hardy Diagnostics has manufactured over 11 million viral transport tubes, which get the specimen from the patient to the lab. And they are also a leader in distributing PPE, including masks, face shields, gloves, sanitizer, and swabs. As a healthy option for himself, for his employees, and for the general public, Jay Hardy created the Moxie Cafe, a restaurant that prides itself in organic and all natural ingredients. No MSG, no trans fats, and no high fructose corn syrup in any of the dishes. Now this is a place to come if you want a really delicious meal that's good for your body. The Moxie Cafe is also a perfect place for chamber music, as you'll see in a moment. Our featured performers today are members of the Santa Maria Philharmonic Woodwind section, Carolyn Tobin clarinet, Nancy Matheson clarinet, and John Dilworth bassoon. A very special shout out to our sponsors, Carol Maurer, John Dilworth, and Carolyn Tobin. Let's meet them now. <laughs> Uh, the first piece we're going to be playing for you was written by one of the greatest composers of all time, and some people would say the greatest composer of all time, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart was born in Salzburg in 1756, and he lived a very short 35 years, but in that time he was able to produce over 600 works, symphonies, concertos, operas, chamber music, he was a genius as a child, and by the time he was six, Mozart was touring all over Europe. But it was as an adult that Mozart started a friendship with Anton Stadler, a clarinetist of that period, and it produced many of the works that we have now for the clarinet, the beautiful concerto and the quintet. Along about that same time, another instrument came into being called the basset horn. Uh, the basset horn was like the forerunner to our alto clarinet, uh, it's pitched lower, it's pitched in F, and it had a much lower sounding and mellow sound to it. The piece we're playing today is a divertimento. Uh, these were music for entertainment. They were sometimes played after dinners or, or meetings or gatherings, sometimes by amateur musicians. They were not considered serious music. Mozart wrote the divertimento for three basset horns in 1783 but they really weren't discovered until after his death when his wife was looking for his compositions and the publisher, Andre, went ahead and made the change to two clarinets and bassoon. They're a lovely part of the repertoire and fun to play. This uh, Devere number one is in B flat. We're playing three movements from it, the Allegro, the Adagio, and the Rondo. <laughs> Thank you. 
The next piece we're going to play for you is by Arthur Frackenpole. It's two movements, including first movement, elegy, and the second movement, dance. Dr. Frackenpole was an American composer who lived from 1924 to 2019. He composed 625 pieces. He taught composition, orchestration, theory, and piano at the Crane School of Music at the University of Newark New York at Potsdam. He is best known for his band music and his brass chamber music. His arrangements of classical works have been featured on several albums by the Canadian Brass. Two movements by Arthur Frackenpole.
Sometimes classical music can seem pretty serious. It can be good to lighten up once in a while, and for that, Peter Shickley is our guy. You've probably heard the Santa Maria Philharmonic play Copland's Fanfare for the Common Man, but I doubt if you've heard Shickley's Fanfare for the Common Cold, or any of his keyboard works like the short-tempered clavier, or gold brick variations. Probably not one of his operas either, like Madama Butterbrickle. So I get to talk about Shickley because he was a bassoon player also. One of his compositions was a concerto for bassoon versus orchestra. He also liked to invent instruments. He came up with one called the trombone, which is a hybrid of parts from a trombone and the bassoon put together in a way that he assures us has all the disadvantages of both. Oh yeah, and then there's the dill piccolo for playing the really sour notes. In addition to his musical parodies, Shickley also composed a lot of relatively serious music. He was a great admirer of the Mozart divertimentos that we began this program with. Because of the charming, unpretentious nature of these casual tunes that were written for social occasions rather than for formal concerts. Following in that spirit, he composed two suites of his own. In them, you'll find familiar dance-like music mixed with some of Shickley's unconventional quirkiness. So from his dances for three, we'll play the tango, but be careful trying to dance to a tango that's in 5-4 time. Then we'll play waltz and rondo from Shickley's Divertimento for Two Clarinets and Bassoon. We also ended our Mozart Divertimento selections with a rondo, but this one weaves into the classical rondo form a bebop-like melody and some pretty unconventional rhythmic patterns. We hope you enjoy these.
Charles Avison was an English composer. He lived during the late Baroque, early classical period. He uh, was born in Newcastle in Northern England. And with a short, within just a short period of years that he studied in London, his entire life was spent in Newcastle. He earned a living there as the church organist for St. Nicholas Cathedral. And he taught violin, flute, organ, and harpsichord. He also started the first subscription concerts in that Newcastle area. Like Mozart, Avison's father was a uh, musician and also Avison's first teacher. Unlike Mozart, Avison wrote only a few works. He, not a, he had a pretty meager output, mostly in one style of writing, mostly concerto grossi. Uh, his most famous were the 12 concerto grossi, which were based on the keyboard sonatas of Domenico Scarlatti. Um, beyond his composing, Avison was also noted for his writings about music. His essay on music expression was well read and talked about during his time. The trio we're playing today is the trio sonata in E minor, opus one, number five, written for string instruments and harpsichord and arranged for two clarinets and bassoon by the French clarinetist Jacques Lancelot. This is a four movement work and we'll be playing the first and last movement, the adagio and the allegro mat gracioso. Our final piece that we're going to play for you today is by Scott Joplin. Scott Joplin lived from 1868 to 1917. His father was a former slave from North Carolina, and his mother was a freeborn African American from Kentucky. He was best known for his ragtime music. He achieved his fame starting with Maple Leaf Rag 
which he published in 1899. We're going to play his Elite Syncopations, which was composed in 1902. This arrangement for two clarinets and bassoon is by Roe Goodman.